You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Last Coffee Hour of 2020. Wow. And yeah. uh, this is, it's, it's going to be a real whiz-bang of an episode because <laughs> um, we get to bring in a fun personality for this one. Um, I'm excited to get to, to share this last episode with uh, a great personality here on KFUO. He uh, recently moved to Fort Wayne, Indiana. And if you haven't guessed it, well, hang around and you'll find out in just a moment. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting the Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. So we uprooted him from California, moved him to Fort Wayne, but he uh, he stayed strong here on KFU Radio, our host of Cross Defense. He's now new admission counselor at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana, the Reverend Tyrell Bramwell. Pastor Bramwell, thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. You are an adventurous man. Uh, first accepted the challenge to uh, come host Cross Defense with us and taking on curious theological topics every week and just digging into them and and also giving us a little glimpse of uh, some some things around seminary, which is kind of exciting too to get that perspective. What has your new call as admission counselor involved so far? Mm, yes. Well, it's been quite adventurous as I am an adventurous person, <laughs> uh, learning the ropes. Uh, uh, you know when you go to the seminary to be a pastor, they, they do this funny thing. They train you to be a pastor. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's very strange. But then when you come to the seminary to be an admission counselor, you're kind of scratching your head going, well, who's going to train me to be an admission counselor? <laughs> uh, so there's been a lot of learning new skills, uh, a lot of learning the, you know, the, the team environment and working there in the office and just software and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, and then trying to do that in a culture where everybody's kind of like re- working remotely this week and not that week and that, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. a thing given COVID. Um, but it's been great. You know, I give a lot of tours. We, we do, we are still open. We're, we're taking our precautions and doing everything safely, but we are still here residentially that the year is happening in person mostly. And so we, we have, uh, you know, people coming, prospective students who come on campus and it's a pleasure to be able to give them a tour of the campus, help them figure out, you know, the answers to questions they might have about not only being a pastor, but just getting to the seminary and, and surviving the seminary life and, and how to pay your bills and all, you know, all that kind of stuff that comes with you know, a new chapter in life. But I've also been able to use some of my my hobby interests, some of my, my the fun things I like to do, photography and, and videography in service to the church. But so that's been really cool. And that's kind of why they brought me on was so that I could use some of those skills given that we're online. And you might say that God knows what he's doing because right when the world goes virtual, they were planning on bringing on somebody who could create virtual content. So it's, uh, it's been fun. I, my most recent thing was I, I helped, actually, it's my baby. Like, I like to call it that. My baby it was President Rast's Christmas greeting. I got to conceive that whole thing from, you know, just a thought in my head to and see it through to fruition. So that was fun. Mm-hmm. What are some of the, uh, the the things you've been able to? Uh, I don't know the things in your studio that you've been putting lots of pictures on Instagram of yeah. of all of this fun stuff that you're able to do. What are some of those those things you've been able to uh, to to play with in your studio now? Yeah. Well, we. Uh, you know, we're, I launched this YouTube live stream called Soldiers from the Sim, and it's you know, it's presenting a pastor, a new pastor every week for 15 minutes and just asking questions about the ministry when he graduated from this seminary and, and when he, you know, where he's at, where he's at and what he's doing. And so to do that, I wanted to upgrade my, my studio. I got some <laughs> lights and got, you know, got the, the microphone up and running and just kind of getting the, the whole thing together so that I could be able to do this and do it well. Well, I found soon as I put together my little studio space, I say that with a you know giant asterisk in front of it. It's an office, <laughs> uh, uh, my YouTube studio. Uh, when, as soon as I got it put together over it, like in my office at the seminary, I, I found that my, my internet, my bandwidth, my upload and download speeds were suffering because everybody else is using it too. <laughs> I tried, I tried my first guest and it was much like a replay of my uh, alone together in Christ venture at the beginning of the year. The first guest was 
it was horrible. It was dropping footage and, and audio was bad. It was just a nightmare. So I quickly, within the span of a weekend, moved to my house, which is also on campus, but we pay for blazing fast internet so we can do these sorts of things. Um, and we're able to, to get soldiers from the sim in a new studio space, which I haven't been able to give a tour of on YouTube yet, but yeah. Uh, not that exciting. I did take some pictures, which I hope people saw on Instagram, Sarah, because there is a great little plug every single time I turn on the camera for KFUO because I do heart KFUO. <laughs> I know. I, as long as I, I saw it on my microphone. Yeah. I shared that to uh, our story too. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I, I would put the, I put the mic tag on, but it doesn't fit my microphone. So I had to figure out a different way to represent. <laughs> Very nice. I, I love the, uh, the I heart KFUO pin button right there on your microphone. That's, that's super awesome. <laughs> so <clears throat> now that you're, you're on campus and, uh, fully immersed in campus life again, um, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, part of the admissions team, tell us what are some of the upcoming opportunities to consider studies at Concordia Theological Seminary, Fort Wayne? Yeah, well, you know, right now in the winter, it's kind of slow, but we're coming into spring. I know fast forward a little bit, you got to get through Christmas and, uh, we have prayerfully consider scheduled for this spring where people can come as a group and they get to do the whole tour thing. And it's really good to come as a group because you get to hear questions and you know, considerations from other people who are also considering coming. And you might not have thought of it that way. You know, it sheds new light because it's different people. It's life in the church. Um, so that's coming up. We also have Christ Academy um, College coming up in the spring. We have Christ Academy High School coming up in the summer for those who are considering the seminary after their undergraduate work. Um, so that'll be fun in the summertime. And um, again, like like I said, with the soldiers from the SIM, we also have like many, many higher education institutions, a lot of virtual opportunities in this new reality we live in. Uh, last night, we just had a, a Facebook Live with the director of admissions and our deaconess admission counselor who really, you know, she's focusing on the, the ladies. <clears throat> and people were able to meet her and, and hear about the deaconess routes and, and all these sorts of things. We did a, one of those similar to that two weeks prior, uh, focusing on pastors. And so we're doing all these things all the time, trying to give people as many opportunities to c prayerfully consider being a, a pastor, being a deaconess, you know, as, as thoroughly as they can, which is why I launched the soldiers from the SIM, because I think, I mean, I would really appreciate hearing from pastors who are in the field, in the trenches, uh, who are dealing with this stuff every day. So you can tune in Here's a little plug. Every Thursday on my YouTube channel, you can, well, except for this Thursday, because it's, you know, it's Christmas time. So every Thursday, you can go to uh, youtube.com forward slash Tyrell Bramwell. Well, is it forward slash? I sometimes hear people call it just slash. Anyway, you slash Tyrell Bramwell <laughs> and uh, check out a new pastor every week. It, it's Eastern time. So it's lunchtime on the East Coast and it's only 15 minutes. So we will not keep you long. And you can hear about joys and struggles and why you should be a pastor. Nice. Very nice. And to answer the question, I believe forward slash and slash are both acceptable. It's backslash that's the issue. Okay. All right. Good. Because many people say backslash, but they really mean slash or forward slash. I just say slash. I Agreed. Thank <laughs> you for saying that. It's on, it's on record now because it's on air. Thank you. Because backslash, it, it is not tilting backward. It's it tilting so forward. Fox. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> thank you. <sighs> With so many opportunities to, uh, to learn about um, being a student at Concordia Theological Seminary, whether it's a becoming a student to uh, to become a pastor with hopes of becoming a pastor or a deaconess. Um, and there are other programs at the seminary too that maybe we don't hear about as much like uh, some of the, the other studies. Maybe you're yeah. a, a teacher and uh, want to um, to increase your, your knowledge of theology as well. There are opportunities for something like that too, right? Absolutely. Yeah, we have just, you know, not just, we have a master's program, but doesn't lead to, you know, pastoral ministry, uh, the Master of Arts in, in that program. We also have other higher education. So if you already have these higher degrees, and you want to go for a, a, a DMIN or a PhD, or, you know, the, we have these programs as well. There's, you know, different routes for the ministry too. There's, you know, the alternate route that doesn't require the, uh, doesn't give you the MDiv, <laughs> but it still certifies you for the ministry. And as well as SMP, you know, um, there's so many different programs here and there's distance and there's residential. There's this, you can skin this cat a thousand different <laughs> ways. It's great. How do we get connected to, uh, admissions at Concordia Theological Seminary? The easiest way is just to go to ctsfw.edu and you can't miss it. It's right there. 
Very good. Now, as part of uh, your endeavors in the admissions team at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, I recently saw you mention something about See the Synod. Uh, I think this is even a hashtag now. Is that right? That is. Yes. <laughs> hashtag See the Synod. See the Synod. Now, it, it sounds like this is an endeavor to visit every congregation in the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod. Is that right? Every single one of them. <laughs> Did they conduct an evaluation like uh, to, to make sure that you were of sound mind before they... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy that's wow yeah, well, yeah that is yeah that's a big goal it is you know i think i don't know i think we need big goals especially in 2020 <laughs> you know I, I think this is the sort of thing that we need to find a, a little bit of fun a little bit of enthusiasm a little bit of joy a little bit of encouragement you know um this year has really knocked us all down it's it's beaten us all up and i just don't like that so let's do something different. Let's have some fun. So you, so just the the fact that this has been a challenging year, uh, you saw an opportunity and uh, you set a a big goal here. Like that's pretty big. I mean, Sarah and I have, have joked about like trying to get out on the road and, and take the coffee hour all over the country, but mm -hmm. I don't know how how feasible that is for us. But you're setting the goal of of visiting every congregation in the synod. That's a big goal. And uh, I want to talk about more about that. But when we come back, we're going to take a short break and uh, we'll learn more about what all that entails and how realistic it is and, and how you're going to do this too. I'm, I'm impressed. So looking forward to learning more. Sounds about great. It. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. You're a miracle. You know that, right? A living, breathing, one-of-a-kind miracle. You were created to stand apart, to share your gifts in the service of others, to make an uncommon impact in a common world. And at Concordia University, it's our mission to help you do that, to live uncommon. To learn more about Concordia, go to cuw.edu. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. We're talking with Pastor Tyrell Bramwell, admission counselor at Concordia Theological Seminary in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He's also host of Cross Defense here on KFUO Radio. Uh, and uh, he, he he digs into theologically curious topics on cross defense. And now um, I'm curious about his adventure that he has proposed of see the synod visiting every congregation in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. That's a, that's a daunting task. How many congregations are on this list to visit? So there are 5,998. Let's just round it up to 6,000. Just a few then. Right. Just, yeah, just a few congregations. Someone shared a map with me. They had taken the time. I guess COVID 2020 <laughs> allowed a lot of us to do a lot of things that were tedious. He took the time and he used a map, you know, like a map quest or a Google Maps or whatever. He made a map with a pin for every one of our congregations. Whoa. You can't see the continent. All you can see is a, a swath of different colored pins on the United States. It's crazy. <laughs> so what... You mentioned Alone Together in Christ earlier as, as something you were doing when you were back in California. Is is that what prompted this or, or was it some some other crazy thing that prompted this idea to see all of the churches in our synod? <laughs> I love how we're just, we're, we're really getting settled into this crazy language. Thank you. <laughs> no, you're absolutely right. So the answer is yes. There's a couple different things, a couple different streams feeding this river. Um, back in the beginning of 2020, beginning of COVID, I started the Alone Together in Christ live stream on Facebook, where I was just interviewing different pastors from across the synod, trying to figure out what was going on in their neck of the woods. What What is COVID doing to your life there in your congregation? How are you coping? How are you dealing with this? And how how similar is it to what the rest of us are all dealing with? And it created a little bit of a you know a fan base. People were interested. They wanted to know because we all felt so alone, so isolated. Well, 
I've always been into vlogging since vlogging has become a thing. I've always been interested in, and especially travel vlogs where people just turn on a camera and go somewhere and bring us along with them. And so I was thinking as I was doing these interviews and, and building little intros and outros and then little map graphics and things like, wouldn't it be great to actually go to these places to actually see the synod and to see how they're dealing with different things and to bring people along with me. Now in Ferndale, that was, it was just a dream because Ferndale is so isolated. In fact, the LCMS reporters came out, did an article and engage about Ferndale a year before. And they told me they had just got back from Papua New Guinea and it was easier to get to Papua New Guinea than it was to get to Ferndale. <laughs> so, I mean, this was not something I you know, actually thought could ever happen, but it was a neat idea to think, well, wouldn't it be cool if we had somebody going around and showing us the synod and how unified we are, how maybe diverse we are in a negative way or a good way, right? Just the challenges, the changes, the differences, just revealing it all for us. Like, who are we? We say we're a synod and synod, that word has links to this idea of traveling together, walking together. And, and I don't know, I've never seen inside many of these different, I mean, there's 5,998 of them. I haven't seen inside more than 10, I'm sure. Um, how do I know I'm walking together? So I just thought it'd be a really neat idea. And now that I'm in Fort Wayne, it actually seems, I know, I know, it, it actually seems doable. <laughs> Crazy, but somewhat achievable if a guy just set his mind to it. Yeah, I know there's there there's probably a way to do that. And you know, a lot of a lot of our churches uh, do tend to be in in pockets. I mean, when when you were talking with people on Facebook about where you'd want to mm-hmm. go, you know, you, you go to one city and there's, you know, 50 congregations within within a couple hours of that one city and in a lot of places around the country. So, yes, I, I think might be a little crazy, but I think, you know, <laughs> if you make a plan, it's probably probably a doable thing. What do you yeah. What are you most looking forward to in this uh, in this thing that that is actually a conceivable idea now? Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing Christians in their contexts, learning. I mean, think about that. I mean, we got to think about this theologically and and as who we are. These are churches that were placed in real human contexts with real human histories. There is a a reason. There's a church wherever that church is. There's a history to it that led to it. And especially in the middle of a, a new culture that is very much virtual and digital, to remember that these are these are physical people that gather or are gathered by the Holy Spirit into physical locations. That to me is exciting to see and to remember and to be able to, to learn a little bit I just got back from a town. I, I saw three in one day, three churches, and the videos haven't even been posted yet. I'm still editing them. But to hear the history of these three different churches all on the same day and to be able to learn a little bit, it just it already is opening my eyes to what we're dealing with as the church. You know, we, we oftentimes kind of, uh, you know, think of church and our little church, our congregation. We are the church and we are, but it's hard for us to get outside of our pews, our sanctuary, to realize that even the church two blocks over is also part of the church with their contexts, and that the Lord has established a way to give them the gospel and to give us the gospel, and it's the same thing, dealing with sinners, with salvation, giving us forgiveness of our sins in the same way, different Little textures, of course, because everybody's a little different. Every individual is a little different, but we're also all very much the same. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see that, and I'm excited to present that. In a, my, my goal is to be very sort of objective, just to present whatever the people want to share with me wherever I go, not to, to tr- sort of you know try to create a narrative, just to show what they want to what they want to tell the the world on you know through my camera. And just let us all see what's going on and see God's hand at work. That's oh, that's exciting. Mm-hmm. You know, here in the, <clears throat> I, I've had the privilege of, of visiting a number of congregations just here in the Midwest, and what a daunting task to to think about that on a grander scale of traveling across the the whole synod. Um, it, it, that's just huge. But there, there's an event that takes place here in the Midwest, and actually, it just took place last. Um, I think it was last Thursday and Friday. We did not get to go. We've gone the last 
probably the last eight to 10 years as a, a family. It's the um, the Christmas country church tour here in Missouri. And KFU actually did the, the a bus tour of it a few years ago. Uh, some churches in Perry County, which is Perry County and Cape County, Missouri, which is where uh, you know, a lot of uh, early um, yeah. German, Saxon immigrants, Lutheran immigrants uh, settled and, and uh, you know, really the kind of the, the, I think some call it the cradle of the, the LCMS. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and so on this Thursday and Friday in December, a lot of these churches, not just LCMS churches, but all, a lot of the churches in the communities are open, decorated for Advent and Christmas, and they'll have, oh, treats, cookies, and other snacks out. And, and just uh, some some time to to visit and meet their neighbors and people go around from church to church in the in the evening there are probably over 20 churches that are open and and welcoming and and uh spend some time visiting with folks who who pop in to to learn more about their churches and i learned so much just about um even our our, our lutheran churches and some of our neighbors and here in the midwest just by visiting a few of those churches learned that um the the saxon lutheran immigrants have the the presbyterians to thank for their 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 own survival uh because mm. they the the presbyterians in brazo were here before the uh saxon lutherans were and so okay. they already had established um a small community and when the when the saxon lutherans came here it's my understanding that many of them were more uh villager or city people and so they're settling in complete wilderness here and so <laughs> they had to rely on um the the uh, presbyterians i believe the scottish presbyterians came to their their aid in helping them settle in that community and make it through their first winter here uh so the the saxon lutherans who settled here um oh much thanks to the presbyterian neighbors who were who were wow. very christ-like and generous in helping them uh survive that first winter here in uh in the wilderness in Missouri. <laughs> See, and that's stuff we lose. Yeah. That's stuff that not everyone realizes. Mm -hmm. We did in Ferndale and this, I guess, as you were telling that story, it just reminded me, I guess this has been kind of brewing in my mind longer than I thought. <laughs> when I first got to Ferndale, we did a peoples and steeples tour for the very first time. Um, and there were six congregations, six churches in Ferndale, a town of 1300 people, uh, very saturated with different churches, mm -hmm. but they all had beautiful uh, structures, beautiful churches that the people had built when they first got there. And so we did this great little peoples and steeples and we learned about the people groups and why there were six different churches and why not, why couldn't we get together and just all be one and all these kind of things. And it was great. People came through and we, we laid out in the, in the commons area there, we laid out all of our history and all the different artifacts. You know, every church has these things. Hmm. Um, and, yeah. and you learn so much. You learn why there's two Lutheran churches in a town of 1300 people. Well, one was German and one was Danish. Mm -hmm. And well, they didn't really get along that well when they first got here. You know, these sorts of things, right? And it's just oh, so much, so much history, so many questions, and and so many answers to be had as well. Wow, so much to learn. All right, so this is going to be a big task. Uh, how long do you think it's going to take you to visit roughly six thousand congregations? And and how are you going to do this? Are you teleporting yourself? Are you flying, driving? <laughs> are... Well, if I if I visited them. You know, one every Sunday it would take me 150 years to visit them all. So I don't okay. think I'm going to do that. Okay. <laughs> um, if I did one a day, it would take me about 16 years. So I'd like to not do that too. Um, I, like Sarah had kind of mentioned, we've been brainstorming this on, on my Facebook page and figuring out how to best to tackle this. And it's going to be hit or miss. It's going to be coming in seasons and things. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to try to hit circuits as best I can whenever I come into an area, to communicate with the circuit visitor and ask if he can help arrange that, which is what I did this past weekend and hit as many as possible and then move on mm -hmm. and then come back around and fill in the gaps. I don't know how long it's going to take. That's going to be one of the biggest challenges is time. Um, I mean, I have all the time that the Lord's going to give me. So hopefully I can get this project <laughs> done, but um, also, you know, cost is a challenge. Like, yeah, I'm not teleporting myself. That might actually be more affordable mm -hmm. to do, uh, figure out that technology and, and implement it <laughs> to travel all over the United States. Um, yeah, we're just going to figure it out. You know, I'm, I'm so close to a lot already being in the Midwest. A lot of them we can do on you know, day trips and mm -hmm. even lunch breaks and things like this. And then as we start getting into those corners, we're going to have to figure this out. And hopefully there'll be some momentum and people will want to see that happen. And we'll, we'll see what the Lord has in, in store for us. Maybe there's a generous RV dealer listening right now. Hey. Who would... Yeah, who, I like what you're thinking. Who would be willing to... Uh, <laughs> 
to to maybe loan you an RV for a few years so you can go visit all these churches in the synod. That would be a fun, fun. Trip. What a blessing. That would be great. <laughs> and we could broadcast cross defense from the road. That would be sweet. This set you up with a mobile studio. That would be fantastic. <laughs> oh, you're getting me excited. Really? Come on, stop. All right. So you'll be do- Lead me not into temptation. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be documenting um, these visits on uh, all your social stuff. And yes. I, see, yeah. listen to me. I sound social like in, stuff. Social stuff. <laughs> um, on the Instagrams. Uh, just <laughs> what you, you said earlier and uh facebook and youtube all these places yeah. all right yeah, those are the three primary places people can find them youtube is going to be where the vlogs go and then instagram where the, the photos will go and then facebook just for conversation about it all very good i'm I, i'm pretty excited i can't wait to see where where you're going to bring us and see then we all get to live vicariously through you as you yeah. visit all of these <laughs> congregations and uh, learn so much great stuff well, thank you so much, Pastor Bremel, and thanks for the the this, just the great work you're doing with Cross Defense and all the great theological, curious topics that uh, you've been bringing us this year in Cross Defense as well. Thanks, thanks for, for the opportunity. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Thanks for being our guest on the Coffee Hour today. God's blessings. Uh, uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy mm-hmm. New Year. Look forward. Merry to, Christmas. Uh, looking forward to to more adventures in 2021. Amen. You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support The Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you, anytime, anywhere. Thank you.